Malacanang deals with the fallout of President Rodrigo Duterte calling God stupid. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the remark ought to be seen as an expression of personal belief. In an interview with GMA7, Roque says, You know, our freedom of religion includes the freedom not to believe in any religion. Roque adds, Filipinos should just accept that the president talks that way. Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo also defends Duterte. He says the president is a very spiritual person and Catholics should not vilify him for his opinion. Senator Sherwin Gatchalian expresses concern Duterte's statement may contradict Christian values being taught to children. Opposition Senator Sonny Trilliani says the tirade against God shows how evil Duterte is, which is supposedly reflected in his policies such as the bloody anti-drug campaign. He adds, in the height of arrogance of power, not only to disrespect and spit on an individual's faith, but also to act as though he is a god. Senator Risa Hontivero says Duterte is only distracting the nation from pertinent issues with his irrational ramblings. Earlier, Senator Panfilo Lacson had this reaction. He says, quote, between him and my God to whom I pray every single day, I don't even have to think of my choice. May my God forgive him and make him atone for all his sins. President Rodrigo Duterte once announced a crackdown on illegal gambling, but he says he would leave wetting operations alone for now. If I cannot replace it itong, with this strong tung loto, haya ang kumuna. Kasi nandyan na yan eh. Duterte says wetting, an illegal numbers game, is an economic activity that helps circulate money in provinces. He adds, if he orders police to crack down on wetting, no other economic activity would take its place and may cripple local economies. Kung wala akong pangpalit sa wetting, ano ang gawin ko? Madali lang mo yan. Pag may isang sugal na ng bara, sabihin ko, relibo ka, umalis ka dyan. Ikaw, lo. Hulihin mo yan ang lahat. Then, what is the activity, economic activity? Duterte says he is brainstorming with some cabinet members on a system that would guarantee income to the government. His latest remarks contradict his usual tough talk on crime, particularly on illegal gambling. In 2016, he threatened to close all online gambling operations. The year after, he signed an executive order to intensify the fight against illegal gambling. Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales clears former Interior Secretary Mar Rojas of plunder but indicts June Abaya for graft. The former Transport Secretary allegedly gave unwarranted benefits, advantage, and preference when the maintenance contract of the Metro Rail Transit 3 was awarded to Busan Universal Rail Incorporated. In a statement, Morales says Abaya, quote, deliberately ignored applicable laws, rules, and regulations and standard operating procedures. The contract was worth 4.25 billion pesos, but Morales drops the plunder complaint against Abaya for lack of probable cause. Aside from Rojas, cleared of plunder charges were former Budget Secretary Butch Abad, former Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima, former Energy Secretary Jericho Petilia, former Science and Technology Secretary Mario Montejo, former Defense Secretary Voltaire Gazmin, former Public Works Secretary Rogelio Singson, and former Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Arsenio Balisacan. Public Services Committee Chair Senator Grace Poe welcomes the move. Poe says her committee observed negligence and inactions of the DOTR officials led by Abaya. Prince William arrives in Jordan Sunday for a historic Middle East tour. He is the first British royal to pay official visits to both Israel and the Palestinian territories. William will spend two days in Jordan for a visit billed as a chance to bond with 23-year-old Prince Hussein, a fellow graduate of Britain's Royal Sadhurst Military Academy. He will head to Israel to begin his visit to the Jewish state and occupied West Bank. He will hold talks with both Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Kensington Palace emphasizes the non-political nature of William's visit, but the region is a minefield of sensitivities. The visit comes at a particularly volatile time after U.S. President Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as a capital of Israel, sparking Arab outrage. Other members of William's family, including his father Prince Charles, have made unofficial visits to Israel and East Jerusalem in the past. 
Actor Kit Harington, who plays Jon Snow in Game of Thrones, married his love interest in the series, Rose Leslie, in a ceremony on Saturday, June 23 at Aberdeen, Scotland. Leslie plays Igret on the show. CNN reports other cast members, Emilia Clarke, Sophie Turner, Macy Williams, and Peter Dinklage were among those who attended the wedding. Leslie and Harrington met in 2012 while doing the show. Their engagement was announced in the Times last September. In 2016, Kidd talked about his romance with Rose at the Jonathan Ross show, saying, I fell in love in Iceland. This is Rose, who plays Igrid, who I've met, who is just the loveliest girl and she could do so much better. Mm -hmm.